Ladies, may God bless you all. Let's just go straight to what the Lord is teaching us today. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 says, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. And so it's telling us that everything written, in the Bible are written there for our admission so that what the wrong that they did we don't repeat it so that some things that they did we should learn from them and so this particular scripture that just came to me as as I was doing the editing is Genesis chapter 35 and God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. God told Jacob that Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel and live there. And when you are there, make an altar unto the Lord. God who appeared to you the time of your need. God who helped you so much. God who has always been with you and has been your shield, has been your buckler, has protected you. Make an altar there for him in Bethel when you get there. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way in which I went. The particular one that really ministered to me is the two, the Genesis chapter 35 verse 2. Then Jacob said unto his household, and, all, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garment. That is what ministered to me. Put away the strange gods. What is that? The Bible says that all these things have been written for our example to teach us, to admonish us, to make us perfect before the Lord. So put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garment. So it's talking about two things that were like pollution, that were like defilement, two things, two things that were hindering them from appearing before the Lord. Two things that they could not take to the presence of God. No, no. Two things that would make them unfit to stand before God. And these two things were what he said, take them off, cast them away so that you can appear before the Lord. One was the strange gods that are among you. Two was the physical garments. Now, if we compare this scripture to another scripture in the New Testament, you will see that it's talking about the same thing. Before we compare, I would like us to look at what the, the strange gods stand for. So when Jacob was talking to them, he was dealing with physical gods because Laban was an idol worshiper with his family. And so they had gods, physical things that they called gods, like sculptures or wood, you know, these things that they call charms and gods, these things that they think that this is what is protecting me. That was their gods. They did not put their trust in the almighty God. 
So they were using that. Now they are to appear before the Almighty God. They cannot come with anything that competes with God, that competes with His sovereignty. Anything. There should be nothing that they were bowing down to or submitting themselves to, but only the true God that they were going to go before. And so Jacob advises them and say, "Take their strange gods away. Take them away. Put them away, because you can't go before the Lord with these things." Okay, so. The strange gods in our life today are not physical things, physical substances, but the strange gods in our lives can be stubbornness, can be disobedience to the will of God. The strange gods in our lives can be something that the Lord is talking to us to stop that we are not stopping. It means that these things have become idols in our lives. It means that we are we are submitting to them above the Holy God. And the Bible says anything that is ruling you is your master and you can't have two masters. So the strange goals in the life of a believer can be money to the extent that the believer is working too much that he cannot have time to pray he cannot have time to to serve the lord he cannot have time to give god a quality service because he is using the time for something else so the strange god can be television where you are sitting down and watching hours upon hours when you are supposed to be praying when you are supposed to be reading your bible the strange god can be some magazine we spend hours and hours reading these magazines these novels these worldly things they are taking you away from God that is the strange God. The strange God is the sin of the heart. The pride that cannot go, that is there, that you cannot take it away. Maybe you have tried, but because it's God, that thing is God in itself, that it has come to rule over people, that it takes a supreme Superior power, supreme power to take that thing away. That thing is a strange God in your life. That strange God is the addiction, you know, the addiction to pornography that you know that this is filthiness. I shouldn't be watching this, but you have no power to, to get it off. Like somebody that I was having conversation with, he said that he has begged God to come into his life. He has prayed and begged God to come into his life, but God is not coming. Why? And I said, you have to show God that you really mean business. You really want him there. And so to show God that you really want him there, throw away the secrets. He had Another, he had two that he, he told me that is pipe or whatever. I had never seen that, that thing before. He showed it to me. I said, don't go and smoke this one. That is Ben over there. Put it in. Don't smoke it. He said that even if he puts it in because I'm telling him to put it in, when I go, he will come back and take it because he has got no power. So that thing has become a God ruling, ruling over his life. So what should he do? What can he do? Because he is powerless. He says, even if I throw it away, I will still come and search through this rubbish where there are filthy things there, contamination. He doesn't care about the contamination, doesn't care about the germs. I am going to search through it and get my strange course out because I need it so much. And so these are the things, the things that are ruling over our lives that are not making us to be perfectly dedicated to God, 
These are the strange gods. After talking about the strange gods, Jacob did not stop there. He says, and change your garments. And change your garments. So you see, he has spoken to them about the strange gods which we have just explain that our strange gods are not these substances okay they are not the substances they are in our heart they are the things that are taking god's worship taking our dedication to god taking our submission to god these things that are competing with the glory of god these are the strange goals now he is also talking about something else change your garment and he was talking about the physical garments i don't know what they were wearing but definitely they were not suitable to come before the Holy God with it. When Jacob heard that God himself gave him that invitation, that Jacob, come build an altar for me and appear before me, he saw it as a very great opportunity to appear before the Holy God. Wow! This is a very great opportunity. There is a promise there for me to become God's own people. There is a promise there for me to become a peculiar person, a chosen of the, of the Lord. So this is a very great promise. Okay, so if I have this kind of promise, then there is something that I should do, including all those that are coming to inherit and share in the promise. There is something we should do. What is that? We should cast away the things that are competing with God. That has become ghosts in our lives. We should cast them away. And then we should change our garments. Where Jacob was now, as he's talking, he is separated from God. Now, God is calling him to appear before him. God is calling him to become his people. So now he sees that, no, this garment that I am wearing, the physical one, is not suitable for me to appear before the Lord. How is this applicable to us, sisters? When we were unbelievers, what we were wearing is never suitable for us to appear before God now. There were some things that we were wearing when we were unbelievers that we look at and we say, no, this one, I can't wear it before the Lord. But because of the intensity of the war going on, the battle for our souls, the, because it is so intense now, the world has reached a point where what you wear to the pub and the club, you know, these things that you wear, that you go outside and men are after you, now, the conscience has been dimmed to the point that that same thing, we can take it to the church. We can take it to the place that we are saying, this is Bethel. This is where I meet with my God. We can carry that same sinful garment there and will not feel any conviction. That is not to tell us that it's acceptable to God, but that is to tell us the depravity of our generation is not acceptable you know in the in the, in the past <laughs> i'm speaking as if i'm a very old person but you know i'm not too old but when i cast my mind to the past i can remember that even unbelievers in the people that were not very grounded in the lord so they were living a double lifestyle there were some things that they would say, no, this one, I can't take this to church. I will wear it when I'm going to see my friends. 
or I will wear it in the neighborhood, I will wear it in the house, but I cannot take it to the church because they know that there are some physical garments that are not suitable to take before the Lord. It doesn't show any respect to God when we wear these things. And so Jacob says, after you have dealt away with these strange gods, now come to your physical garment. Because the way you are in your profession comes out in your dressing, in your outward, in your garments. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. So Jacob is telling his family, look at the promise that God has given to us, that we are going to be his people. You see, God says we should come before him. It means that he has chosen us. Look at this great promise to be God's own people now. Let us be worthy of this promise. So for us to be worthy of this promise, let us cast away the strange gods. And that is to do with the saints in our hearts then let us change our garments and second corinthians chapter 7 is telling the believer the christian the same thing having therefore these promises the promise that comes with coming before the lord being chosen by the Lord, the promise of eternal life, the promise of divine protection, the promise that we shall be his people and he shall be our God. Having all these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness, from all filthiness. You see, that Genesis 35 Jacob was saying, and be clean. Why should you be clean? Because there is filthiness there. Change the garments. Because these are filthy garments before the Lord. These are garments that we use to serve idols. And so let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Filthiness of the flesh. Physical flesh. Physical body. Remove everything on your body that is a defilement. Everything on your body that God's word condemns. And we go into God's word. And we see these things that his word is condemning. One, God's word condemns the use of trousers for women. The use of skirts for men. God's word says in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That is, a woman should not wear a man's garment. And generally, we know that men's clothing include the trousers or the pants. And the reason God is saying the woman shouldn't wear the man's clothing is because of, of our body shape. So the shape of a woman is different from a shape of a man. So what will fit a man very well will not fit a woman that same way. The trousers, because of the way they have, they have made it, fits the man very well. It is designed for the man. And when a woman wears it, it brings out her shape. You know, the, the, the backside is almost as if she is naked. 
you can imagine her naked body in this thing. And there are many men who are weak in their minds and they are going to lust. They are going to sin with it. And this, this sin of lust, I will tell you sisters, sometimes it happens unconsciously. It would take God to convict the person and say you were lusting. Because of how the world has become now. Now the battle is so fierce. So ladies, anything that we are doing that is causing sin to another person, I, I beg of you in the name of Jesus Christ, if you can do something about it, please do it and save souls because the battle is so fierce that we all are praying so much for our souls. God, please, please help us not to be cast away because we can fall at any time. And so if we can be our sister's keeper, our brother's keeper, that is showing love. The Bible says God is love. And if these things are causing someone to sin, why should we insist on wearing them? Okay, so that is what the Lord is telling us today, sisters. Please just go to God and ask him of it in the name of Jesus. Let's move on. Now, what are some of the things that are the garment, the filthiness of the flesh? What is it? The Bible tells us not to learn of the way of the heathen. So anything that the heathen is putting on, we are not to copy. The heathen means unbelievers. People who have not yet accepted the Lord, they are the heathen. And so all through the Bible, God has given us a lot of examples of how the heathen woman dressed. And the first example that I would like us to look at is that example of the great Babylon that was personified as a woman in Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that seated upon many waters. Look at the description there, whore. I was doing editing um subtitling on youtube and when the subtitles were generated automatically where the whole the whole is they made it blank they put hash and put it in a in a in a blanket why because that is a very great word that they think that is an abusive word. They think that no, this word is not appropriate to be written down, but it's written in the holy word of God. The judgment of the great whore. And this great whore has got a kind of dressing. So how can a Christian woman copy this, this dressing style and think that it's, it's okay to appear before God with? And we know that as Christians, even in our home, we are before the Lord. If God has said that I shouldn't wear trousers, I will not say I will wear it at home. No. If God has forbidden it, then it's forbidden even in my home. So this great whole Babylon has a kind of dressing that she is putting on. And when you go to Proverbs chapter 7, there is also another lady there who was wearing the, the, the attire of a halot. A whore is the same as a halot. And so the attire of a halot, if you haven't read a lot of scriptures in the bible where you have come across these um this clothing thing you may not you will wonder that what is this attire of a halot what is that but you will know as we go along that this babylon was dressing in a way and she is a halot 
Now, there is another person in the Bible that the Bible says that she was also into holdom. Holdom. That means she was also a whore. And her name is Jezebel. And this Jezebel also had a kind of dressing. So put these dressings together and you get the complete attire of a harlot. Really, God loves us, ladies. Please, let us appreciate the Lord, what he's teaching us. And may we never go on the defensive side and say that the person who is speaking is condemning people. Why are you condemning people? No, Jesus says, I do not condemn anyone but my word. These are all coming out from the word of God. He says, the word I speak to you, they are not my word, but they are from the one who sent me. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. The Bible says, steady to show yourself approved before God. Please, ladies. Now let's go on. So he says, Number two, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet, scarlet beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns this beast with seven hands and ten horns that is satan satan is the one controlling the woman carrying her around and the woman who is being controlled by satan look at the way she was dressed in the fall revelation 17 verse 4 and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color when someone was dressed in just one maybe just the purple it meant that the, pe the person was a decent person. It's enough to be in purple and it was enough to be in scarlet, but not to put the two together. So this one, this kind of dressing is called the dressing in pomp and glory. That is for unbelievers. That is what Apostle Paul was telling Timothy to teach it to the women. So he calls it costly array because when you put the purple and the scarlet together, it becomes overly expensive clothing. And that was how Babylon, the great Babylon was dressed. She was dressed in costly array. We are not supposed to be like that. We have a video that compares her to the Proverbs 31 woman, and we saw that the Proverbs 31 woman clothed herself in purple and clothed her family in scarlet, which tells us that they were moderate. That is modest dressing. Okay, so modest dressing is not dressing in tattered clothes, it's not dressing in, in dirty clothes. Or looking so low class, you know, looking as if you are worn out and cast away. No, that is not mother's dressing. And mother's dressing is not also so expensive, the extravagant dressing. No, modesty is in the middle. So it's not too poorly and it's not too expensive. It's in the middle. So that Proverbs 31 woman gave the purple, gave the scarlet to her family and she wore the purple. Now, let's see how this woman was dressed again. So we are seeing the number one characteristic of the attire of, of an halot. And the number one characteristic is costly array she was arrayed in purple and scarlet color she was arrayed in extravagance number two and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls that is the second characteristic she was decked with gold and precious stones and pearls jewelries first timothy 
chapter 2 shows us the women godly women how to dress first timothy chapter 2 verses 9 to in like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array this gold or pearls is what this woman is dressed in she was decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and apostle paul says not with let the addressing be without be without john wesley has got notes on the bible his commentary please ladies please i will encourage you you just go on bible hub and you type um, wesley's notes it will come please just check it for yourself john wesley says that these things are forbidden and that is the truth because the bible has explicitly said not with so he says that it is forbidden for women to use it and what is forbidden that is the gold and the pearls that babylon was decked with and these are jewelries it is forbidden for a christian woman someone who is professing godliness to put these things on why because it has been found on a whole who is a heathen and the bible says we should not copy their lifestyle and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication so we have seen the second characteristic of the dressing of a harlot now we go back to first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety so we see emphasis on shamefacedness shamefacedness is a natural quality of a woman where she is mindful of her body she doesn't want her nakedness to be in public somebody says that it is rare to see a mad woman on the street stark naked they cover themselves they are mindful it's because this is a natural characteristic of a woman it has been embedded it has been fixed in a woman but the harlot okay or the modern day prostitute does not have this quality she has destroyed it and so she will go out with her breast or part of the breast showing the thighs are showing the figure her figure or the body shape is all outside and she does not care about it because she has destroyed this shamefacedness instead of it she has the impudent face of a harlot that proverbs chapter 7 um harlot there the, the bible says and with an impudent face so instead of the shamefacedness she's got this impudent face this face this this character like you know like she is not she doesn't care about anybody okay she is not humble she is proud but for us we are supposed to be seen with this this ornament of meek and quiet spirit this shamefacedness and sobriety okay ladies the bible says we shouldn't learn of the ways of the hidden and so this nakedness this tight clothing we are not supposed to be dressed in them so that is another characteristic of the attire of an harlot now we will look at the dressing of jezebel before we read about jezebel's dressing i would like to show you the kind of woman she was so let's read second kings chapter 9 verse 22 and it came to pass when joram saw jehu that he said 
Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms, whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. So Jezebel was not only a woman that was usurping her husband's authority, she was not only a witch, she was also a whore. He says, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. So this kind of woman, we need to know how she was dressing so that we stay away from her dressing. Because the Bible says, learn not the ways of the hidden. Now let's see how Jezebel adorned herself in the 30, in 2 Kings chapter 9. Verse 30, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face. She painted her face. That is makeup. She put makeup on her face and tired her head. So her dressing was the makeup on her face and tired her head. Now we were looking at what broidered her is. And the broidered hair is also the tiring of her head, which is adornment on your head. And that tire of the hair was to bring her out as a queen, to bring her out as a priestess of Baal. Okay, so she had that thing that she would put on her head. Now, women have got their own things, how they do things on the head to make them appear in a way that she they think that yes that is me this is how i want to appear so women have abandoned the hair that god gave them and they go for false hair they go for indian hair peru hair egyptian hair whatever hair artificial hair synthetic hair and put on their head so these all come under the broidered hair. When you read Isaiah chapter 3, where God was referring to this adornment on the hair, God refers to it as a well-set hair. So it's anything that is forced on your hair, anything that is magnifying the hair, anything that is bringing glory onto the hair, that is the broidered hair. Now, there is another thing that women, huh, ladies, the, the devil is wicked. Hey, may God help us. Satan does not want us to escape. Even the ones that are so close to escaping, Satan says, aha, uh -huh, I've got you there. Now, what the devil has brought again to women is dreadlocks that they have given it another name they call it sister locks and they say it's a natural hairstyling my ladies how is that natural because they are saying it's natural because you are using natural products but that is not the hair that god gave you if a baby is born with this dreadlocks on her head definitely definitely especially the heathen they are going to sacrifice things and say that this this baby is is an idol they are going to say this baby is a goddess that has come back to life because that is not the natural hair on the african hair no no that is not the natural hair so all these dreadlocks i remember when um i embraced the teaching of holiness and I was twisting my hair. Okay, so I was twisting it, not into dreadlocks, but this, um, the, the normal twist. I don't know how they call it. Is it single twist? I don't know how they call it, but your own hair, you part it into two and then you just wrap it around. So that is what I was doing to my hair. So there was a time that somebody saw me and she asked me if I was doing dreadlocks. And I was a little bit offended. I'm like, dreadlocks? No, it's twist. It's just my hair. 
So it took some time when I, I came to a video of Holiness Revival Movement and they, it was questions and answers video. So somebody was asking about the kind of hair which is suitable. What kind of hair is decent before the Lord? And so it came up that Pastor Paul Reka, the International Director of Holiness Revival Movement, had said that women should not do that twist. Why? Because it looks like Bob Marley's hair. Why is he saying that we shouldn't do it because it looks like Bob Marley's hair? Who is Bob Marley? Was Bob Marley a prophet of God? Was Bob Marley a Christian? They had their own religion. And in their own religion, this is how they do their hair. So why should a child of Jesus copy the life of someone who is serving the devil? Any religion which has got nothing to do with Jesus Christ is a direct worship of Satan. So why should a child of God copy that kind of hairstyle? So that is how I got convicted, you know, um, thinking about how that lady thought I was doing dreadlocks and to how Pastor Rika is saying, no, it, that is not decent. It doesn't appear decent at all. So we shouldn't do it. I got it. I got it. Many, many Christian women are embracing this kind of thing. Please ask God about it. Sister Locke is not your natural hairstyle. Maybe I should chip in the dream I had the other day. So I had a dream where women were so happy about um about hair extension. So the hair extension that they, they, they sell, okay? So they had the hair extension that they sell. Somebody was holding them and was saying this one is this name they were giving them name this name that name but the name that really came out that i remember or i remembered when i woke up is sister locks he said this one is this that one is called that and this is sister locks i got that name sister locks so in the dream, I thought I should say something to the women because they were so happy about these false hair. That, that wasn't their hair. So and, and it was like they were despising what God has given them and rather was happy with what God didn't give them. They were rather happy with, with the falsehood than the truth, the truth of God. On their head, they despised it and they liked the lie. So I got up in the dream. In the dream, I, I stood up and I told them, I said, ladies, please embrace your natural hair. And when I said that, when I was talking, my voice was not going anywhere. And so I magnified my voice and I spoke it out. And I said, ladies, please, ladies, embrace your natural hair. And when I said, ladies, embrace your natural hair, the whole place was quiet. And the feeling was like misfeeling. It was like they were not happy. I told them. And that was the end of that dream that I had the other day. So please, ladies, take yourselves to God. If you want to enter into heaven, Jacob says, if you want to go to Bethel, get rid of the false gods and change your garments. We are supposed to change the things on our body. That is what the Lord is telling us today. So having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. The filthiness of the flesh, we can do it. We can do it. That is remove the trousers, remove the jewelries, remove the, the, the hair, the, the artificial hair, remove everything that is not fitting for a woman professing godliness and get rid of the filthiness of the spirit, that one we cannot do it on our own. We don't have the power to do it. That one is God to do it. There is anger in me. There is stubbornness there. We take ourselves. We ask the Lord to sanctify our hearts. And that is God's work in us 
perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We know that the Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And so sisters, that is it. For us to qualify for heaven, we should cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, the body. So we see that God has got his part to play and we have our part to play. Let us do our part and God will do his part. And before we finish this, I want to tell you one testimony of somebody. She says that when she felt like her spirit was coming out in death, she was desperate and she was praying and telling God, please lord save me because she was a christian lord save me then jesus replied her and said if i save you what about what you are carrying on your head mm. and she was having these false hair on sister linda in her testimony says how narrates how she was punished for this false mm. so ladies please Take everything to God in prayer. The Lord bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.